Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be using Porygon. One of the weirder Pokemon ever, honestly. It gets forgotten a lot about nowadays since you would just evolve it to Porygon 2 or Porygon Z, which frankly are also pretty forgotten about. But yeah, in terms of a Pokemon that doesn't evolve, its stats are pretty bad. But it does get a decent move pool. I mean, it doesn't look so great. It gets some really good TM moves, but its move pool that it gets via level up looks bad, right? Well, there's one thing that's going to help it out a lot. You see, one of the biggest problems about picking red and blue as the games I was going to do this in is that red and blue have the Brock barrier. Brock is so hard for Pokemon that don't have a special move or for any normal Pokemon pretty much. Porygon of all things, however, has something most Pokemon in this game don't. A move that powers up its attack. That move is Sharpen. You would almost never use this on Porygon because looking at its stats, its special is way better than its attack and the best moves it gets are special moves. However, we're not going to get any of those moves until level 23. So for Brock, we're going to have to use Sharpen. There's another thing we can use that's unique to Porygon, and you know what, I'm just going to fast forward to Brock. First thing you'll notice, that awful 3D style color scheme was just for the beginning. I was going to do it the whole way through, but nah. Uh, this is a lot easier to look at. The second thing you'll notice is I use the move conversion. The move conversion has changed several times. Nowadays, it's still useless, but in Generation 1, it changes your type into your opponent's type, which is not really a thing conversion does anymore. I believe the move reflect type does that. But yeah, conversion 2, which was invented in gold and silver, changes you into a type that resists your opponent's last move. Conversion nowadays changes your type into one of your moves type, specifically the one in your first move slot. But in generation 1 only, it changes you into your opponent's type. Which helps for Brock, obviously, because since we're now a Rock type, Tackle doesn't do very much damage. So this is going to be the play. You Sharpen and Tackle and absorb Brock's Tackles. Unfortunately, it doesn't end up working out. And in order to understand why, we need to watch the next battle with Brock. Now, everything else is the same. Same attack, same number of Sharpens. So what gives? It comes down to rounding. I didn't know this going in, but let me explain a little bit more. Because we're dealing with such small numbers and the way Pokemon always has to round to a whole number and that it rounds down, I have a feeling the same type attack bonus is doing a lot more than it otherwise should be. And so, staying normal type for damage output seems to be the play. The problem is, we then don't have enough HP to get past Geodude and then Onyx. And Geodude likes to use Defense Curl. So there really is only one solution here and it's the most boring and predictable solution. We're gonna have to level up at least a little bit more. Two levels more to be exact. Now, the reason this worked at level 14 was a combination of good luck on my part, but also just having more HP and more importantly, dealing more damage to Onyx. Onyx, funny enough, has way better defense than Geodude, but because it's not using Defense Curl and the way rounding works and everything, it's actually dealing a ton of damage. The one thing I'm kind of disappointed about is that I really didn't get to show off Conversion, a move I'll never use. It sucks. I can't really envision using it anywhere else, but we don't really have a move to replace it with, so I'll keep it with me for now, and if we find some niche use for it, then I can say I used conversion. There actually is someone on Reddit who tracks every single move I've ever used in one of these runs. And I'm not gonna just start using moves just to add to that list. I don't even remember where it was, but it is kind of cool to try and use different strategies in order to get the fastest time possible. But all right, let's move on ahead. There's really nothing to say about Mount Moon. Unfortunately, we can't learn Water Gun, which would help with some of the Rock Pokemon coming up a little bit later. We have to make the choice, Misty or Rival 2. I chose Rival 2. Unfortunately, that choice was, well, it wasn't great. 
Whether we use Sharpen or not, it looks like it's going to take 5 or 6 turns to knock out Pidgeotto. And that's a problem. This time Pidgeotto doesn't use Sand Attack, but it can still do a ton of damage. There's really nothing Pidgeotto could do that isn't bad. And the fact it takes so long for us to knock it out, A, increases the risk of Sand Attack, but B, doesn't give me enough health to actually get through the rest of Rival 2's team. So I had to try maybe to battle Misty, but I doubt that's going to go all that much better. And guess what? I was right. So the battle with Misty, I mean, I can use Sharpen, right? And that's going to raise my attack. And Star U is worse than Star Me, but it's still good. So I have 12 HP for Star Me, and after next defend, it's going to be a five hit KO. Water Gun knocks me out. Yeah, this is not going to be any easier than Rival 2. And this is annoying because although there is one additional trainer, I didn't actually anticipate this part of the game giving me so much trouble. I figured that since it's same type and I have Sharpen, it wouldn't take that many turns to knock out either Pidgeotto or Staryu. Turns out, I was really wrong. And so, I'm gonna have to think about maybe unique strategy, or maybe I'm just gonna have to battle one of them enough times until I win. And it might surprise you to learn that the win actually came against Rival 2. Unsurprisingly, it came down to luck versus Pidgeotto. We got a bunch of quick attacks, and the sand attack missed, followed by a crit by me. Without all those things, we probably wouldn't have got past it. Now, Abra doesn't actually attack, and we have sharpened. So, as long as we somehow are able to outspeed, we will be able to sweep through the rest of the team. Rattata goes for quick attack, so no outspeeding there, and Charmander does outspeed, but it goes for Leer. And that's how we won. So, not as surprising now that I've explained it to you, kind of how these videos work. And now that we've beaten Rival 2, we can actually beat the rest of Nugget Bridge. And when we come back to Misty, likely things will be a lot easier than you last saw. Alright, so now we're back at Misty, we're at level 22. I go for conversion as it goes for X Defend. So now it's not going to be able to use any water moves. Why? Because of how the AI works in Generation 1. So by using conversion, water moves are now not very effective. We do get Psybeam, that's not going to be useful against Starmie. But, the way the AI is programmed in Generation 1 is very simplistic. It doesn't look for what does more damage, it only looks for type effectiveness. Well, for certain trainers, and Misty happens to be one of them. So we are able to completely cheese this battle, but by leveling up, we were able to have enough HP to cheese this battle. So, yay. Now we have Psybeam, and that's super, super, super helpful. Also... That's a battle where conversion was genuinely useful. Let's go! I didn't think that would actually be a thing. I'm really happy now. And with a psychic type move in Generation 1, that's going to help us immensely. There's almost nothing that resists psychic, so I think things are going to be kind of smooth sailing going forward. But, you know, you never know. You know? Alrighty, so we've made our way all the way to Rival 3. This is going by pretty smoothly. I mean, you haven't really seen anything. Quick Attack, Psybeam, actually, we outsped, that's pretty cool. A uh, Hyper Fang Miss is probably gonna seal the deal. Kadabra, we're gonna go for Conversion, and now, we're Psychic type. That means not only do we resist Kadabra's attacks, but it also means that we do Stab Damage versus Charmeleon, and even with a Burn, that's not going to spurn our chances at a victory. All right, I promise I'll stop this stuff. But we do win. And this time, not as a gimmick, legitimately, conversion is coming in handy. And it may come in handy once more against Assistant Janitorial Staff Surge, who has actually been a little better lately, probably because we've been battling him with some of the worst Pokemon in Generation 1. But now that we have something slightly less terrible, I think we will see why he has not been a lieutenant in a long, long time. Now, I did forget to heal the burn, but that should be okay. So, we're just gonna go, oh no. We only have four side beams. That actually could be a problem. So, after Sonic Boom, we have 54 HP. 
Now, Thundershock, we don't one-shot Pikachu. And, okay, we're gonna lose, but that's not my fault. Well, kind of actually is exactly my fault. But, yeah. Alright, uh, I'll be back. So, I didn't bother getting Burn Heal, but I do have an Aether, which I use. So now I have 14 Power Points. X-Speed is fine. Tackle is fine. Better than Sonic Boom. So now I'm going to go for Conversion, and that's going to stop Raichu from doing immense damage with Thunderbolt. We have 43 HP. Thundershock only does 6. Thunderbolt does 13. That's actually not good. X-Speed is really good. And... Oh, no. Ah. All right. The burn may have actually mattered there. I don't want to have to walk back to get Burn Heal, because that would cost some in-game time. Oh, and I forgot to do the Aether. Uh, so the Aether, by the way, at Bill's house, there is an Aether hidden in the fence. And you know what? While talking... Uh, do we get the Burn Heal? Do we get the Burn Heal? This is such a tough call, because it literally would help. I don't know why I said literally. Of course it would help. What would it figuratively help? Ah, uh, you can see I'm deciding back and forth. And in the end, are we going to send it? Are we going to send it? Yeah, we're going to send it. Let's go. All right, so we're sending it because, you know, save those in-game frames or seconds. Sonic Boom really sucks. That's 20 damage. Another Sonic Boom sucks, so we're at 34. Conversion, but we're only at 24 HP. Growl doesn't really help much. So we need, like, a Confusion, maybe? No, we don't get it. X-Speed. No, we don't get it. Growl. Crit. And, yeah. Yep. That, to be fair, was because Voltorb used Sonic Boom. But, hey, I insulted Surge pretty badly, I'll admit. This may, may, be a little bit of karma. Maybe. You know, who is to say? Me, the narrator? No. It is for you to decide. And while you're deciding that, why don't you decide to check out today's sponsor, J Rose 11 Oh, look at that, it's me! If you subscribe to my channel, you'll watch all my videos, including me losing to a Raichu, again! Alright, I'm actually getting a little annoyed, and it isn't just the burn, we really just want Voltorb not to use- Okay, that's perfect. So Voltorb didn't use Sonic Boom, the critical hit makes the Screech not matter, and we're not getting any badge boosts. Don't know what those are, but finally, finally we start to get some good luck. And you can see as we battle the Raichu for like the hundredth time, that in the end, what mattered was not getting Sonic Boom from Voltorb. So Voltorb actually ended up being, well, I guess it was Raichu, but Voltorb also ended up being one of the big limiting factors, which is different. And it's why I like doing these runs, because you never know. But we are 12 minutes in, actually we're 13 minutes in, and we still haven't gotten past the third gym. It's time for Porygon to pick up the pace. So, fast forwarding a bit, we're at Giovanni number one. Now, we could get Ice Beam, but I'm gonna use Side Beam for now. You can see it's doing more than enough. We have Thunderbolt as well for Kangaskhan. Comet Punch, ugh, that could have been really bad, but then Guard Spec, great. But basically, if we delay our trip to the Mart, we have more money. With more money, we can get more vitamins. With more vitamins, the late game will take less long. And less long means faster, and faster means better, and better means I'm happy, and happiness means I'm not sad, and being not sad means I'm glad? I think? Well, actually, I guess it would just mean I'm content. This is very philosophical for a Porygon run, but then again, Porygon is... I don't even know what it is. That is a great epistemic question. What is a Porygon? Uh, we can handle that later. For now, we're gonna decide whether we want to go to Erica. Or do we want to go to Rival 4? The answer may surprise you. Unless you thought I was going to Rival 4, in which case it didn't surprise you whatsoever, because that's exactly what we're doing. And look at the beautiful teal background, or light blue. Anyway, I really like what I did with the color scheme here. I also like that Ice Beam one-shots everything except Gyarados where he used Thunderbolt, and then Kadabra, it outspeeds, and it doesn't get one-shot by Ice Beam or Thunderbolt, but Charmeleon also doesn't. So, not everything got one shot, but it didn't even matter. We do have the Psychic TM from Mr. Psychic, and that's going to make this entire thing really easy if we choose to use it. Do we? No. Because here's the thing you guys need to understand. Using TMs right away might seem like a great idea, and sometimes it is. But, and for the one time in the run I'm actually being serious, 
Holding on to TMs till the last possible second tends to be the best idea, since in generation well up to generation 5, they're not reusable. And if we delete either conversion or recover or thunderbolt or ice beam, we're not going to get another one. So if we don't have to use psychic, I don't want to use it quite yet, but we might have to use it relatively soon because Koga is coming up. Now, I know what you're thinking, that means Jero is about to forget Erika again, but no, we're going to battle her right now. And unfortunately, there's an issue. Sleep Powder, and then Wrap. And Razor Leaf's actually pretty good. I could have gone for Agility or Poison. Ice Beam will one-shot Tangela, and we do outspeed Vileplume. Thankfully, because we're poisoned, I think it has Sleep Powder. It cannot put me to sleep, and we're able to knock it out with Ice Beam. And we have enough health that we can just fly our way back to the center, and we don't have to worry about fainting because technically we should only have one Pokemon, but it's Gen 1, so we need HM assistance. So, kind of a gray area in the rules, whether what happens if you faint in the overworld, and we didn't have to deal with that, which is nice. Anywho, now we're going to head to the Safari Zone, and eventually, hopefully, Koga. I say that because there is a trainer that tends to give us problems, this juggler over here. And you see, the problem with this juggler is that Psychic Pokemon are insanely overpowered in Generation 1, and we're using Psychic Move. So freezing the first Drowsy, that's pretty good, but you can see it's a 3-hit KO, Confusion, Poison Gas, and now the scariest Pokemon, Kadabra. The reason Kadabra is my favorite Pokemon, by the way, is because of how just crazy overpowered it was in the first few generations. Really, it was actually from Pokemon Stadium Rentals, if you want to know the truth. But you can see there just how dangerous it is, especially in Generation 1, with the increased critical hit rate. So it might make sense for now actually to skip Koga and to go to Sylph Company. We can try Rival 2. We have super effective moves and agility, but there are tons and tons of really easy trainers here that I can battle if I have to. But first things first, let's go battle Rival Fievel. Let's see how the battle goes, and if we have to battle more trainers, we can do that then. So we're at equal level to Pidgeot, and we can use Agility to outspeed it. It's a two-shot, and it goes for Whirlwind, which is great. Ice Beam one-shots after a crit. Thunderbolt one-shots because it's double super effective. We level up, but here's the big issue. Psy Beam with a crit, it's going to be actually Confusion. Wow. Theoretically, oh, we were really, really close to beating Rival Fievel. So this is going to be possible, it's just going to require a little bit of luck. And this is where I have to make the decision, how much luck do I really need and how long is this really going to take? And if the answer is, well this could take like an hour, then maybe you should level up. If the answer is, it could take, I don't know, about 5-10 minutes, it's worth it. Unfortunately, this was not taking 5-10 minutes. It took just over 2. Which, to be fair, is lots of attempts, but Agility, Ice Beam, we get a crit, pretty good. Execute, Reflect is fine, we knock it out. Gyarados, we're always going to knock it out in one hit, very good, we level up. Alakazam, it gets the freeze. And once I got that freeze, I knew it was over. Because although Charizard is scary, uh, well, not if we get a crit, but it wasn't probably going to be able to one-shot unless it got, like, Flamethrower crit which I don't even think it has Flamethrower. I'm pretty sure it just has Ember. But that's neither here nor there. You might wonder, why did I pick Charizard? Well, I didn't really have any good options. Thunderbolt was super effective against Blastoise. And then we have the Psychic moves, which means that Venusaur was totally out of the question because I get those really early. And Charizard, I mean, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt... I don't know, maybe I delete one of them by the end. It seemed like the hardest option. Plus, then we get Gyarados, which is really good, and Executor, which is pretty bulky. When using a normal Pokemon, trying to pick the toughest starter for the rival to have is kind of difficult. So I just try to do my best and keep within the spirit of Gen 1, which is to make my life as difficult as possible. Anyway, Giovanni 2 has been really bad in some of my runs lately. So I think it's a little bit cathartic. Just to see, oh, that didn't one shot. Okay, well, that's great. Anyway, it still is cathartic to see what hopefully will be an easy victory. Okay, two shot on Kangaskhan, one shot on Rhyhorn, and now please. Okay, so fun fact, Ice Beam does more than Psychic, and we almost lost. But we didn't, and that's good. 
So it was in fact cathartic. Now, we can't actually do anything else unless we want to go and battle Sabrina. And remember, the big obstacle are psychic Pokemon, so much easier to battle these. But as you can see, now that we're battling at level 40, it's a two shot on the Drowsy, and Psybeam, if it doesn't crit, doesn't do all that much. Not quite a two shot on Kadabra, which is a problem because we're poisoned, but we make it through. And once we get to Koga, things are going to be a heck of a lot easier because we do have Psychic and we're super effective and coughing is kind of slow. We do not get any special badge boosts because that would require us to beat Blaine, but I still think we're going to win fairly easily. Hopefully, I'm right. All right, as always, Koga leads with his coughing. We're going to go for Psychic and it one-shots. Muck does not one-shot, but Minimize... We don't get a miss, very good. We one-shot coughing number two, and now it's all off to self-destruct. Oh, wheezing out speeds and hit with sludge. Well, the crits kind of made that a moot point, but I didn't think wheezing would outspeed me. Anyway, a win is a win, and we can move on to either Sabrina, that might not be a great idea, or we could go to Blaine, that would give us special badge boost, which is pretty cool. I chose to battle Blaine. Now, it might surprise you, but Ice isn't resisted by fire in this game. And we are also going to get a Gen 1 miss, which is a 1 in 256 chance. But thanks to agility, we're able to outspeed everything. And we come really close to knocking out our canine. Not quite there. Psychic has a 33% chance to lower special, which is what I was going for. So let's just try that again. All right. So this time we go for agility, just like last time. Retroactive Super Potion. Psychic Leer is good, and Psychic knocks it out. Another Psychic Stomp, I switch to Ice Beam. Unfortunately, I should have used two Ice Beams, but thankfully we get a Growl and knock out Ponyta without taking any further damage. Rapidash, I go for Psychic just to get the special drop. It's a 3 KO, and then I try to get it against Arcanine. I do, and you can see Ember's doing less, and I run out. Ice Beam knocks it out. That was actually a case of me going a little too fast and not reading what happened on screen. But thanks to some good RNG, we defeat Blaine pretty easily. Wow, that wasn't great. Anywho, now we only have two gym leaders left, Sabrina and Giovanni. And you can't do Giovanni before Sabrina. So time to save our game and go in battle. Everyone's favorite gym leader, Sabrina. She leads with the best Pokemon ever. Disable Psychic, actually right away, gets undisabled. And we knock out Kadabra pretty quickly. Mr. Mime, I set up one agility. Go for Ice Beam, it goes for Barrier. I knock out Mr. Mime. Venomoth, Psychic, doesn't quite knock it out, but we get a special drop. And then we use agility. Try to outspeed Alakazam. Ice Beam, Psy Beam, another Ice Beam. Ooh, recover, this could be bad. Uh, we're poisoned. This could be bad. Psywave misses. A critical hit. Psywave. No! No! Psywave actually did. Oh, that was, I think, the most it could do. Anywho, let's try that again. Agility disabled. Psychic. Ice beam. Recover. All right. Well, it's frozen, but agility is disabled, so we can't set up agility. That's great. Finally, after attacking Mr. Mime, it becomes undisabled. We set up all three. And this is boosting our special. Of course, we now have almost no HP for Alakazam, so unless we get a freeze, we lose. All right, this is gonna happen. It's just gonna take a little bit of time. There's nothing more I can really do here. So let's just try one more time. Disable, Thunderbolt is fine. Recover, Ice Beam, we get the freeze, perfect. Uh, this time we can set up three agilities. Keep in mind, freeze, cannot be thawed in generation one i believe unless you hit it with a fire move which i don't have and why would i do that anyway alakazam again ice beam reflect is fine thunderbolt psi beam thunderbolt i was going for the paralysis we level up thankfully we didn't level up in the middle of the battle and that is seven gym leaders giovanni three should be pretty easy so let's just skip right on ahead he leads as always with the rhyhorn and we're gonna go for agility. And now we're gonna go for a second agility. And you know what? I'm gonna get a miss, a gen one miss. It's our second of the day. Anyway, basically we should outspeed and one shot everything. 
But, oh, well, because we level up, we don't one-shot the Nido Queen or Nido King. So it's actually a little bit closer than I'd expect. We don't even one-shot Rhydon, which is kind of annoying. But I guess we're a little underleveled, so that makes sense. Anywho, that is eight gyms. But now we have to go beat Rival 6 and the Elite Four right after, and that's usually pretty difficult. Porygon's actually been pretty okay so far, but will it continue to be okay in the actual difficult portion of the game? There is only one way to find out. Alrighty, so he leads with Pidgeot. We're gonna go for Ice Beam, it doesn't knock it out, and a second Ice Beam does. Now I use one agility, Rhyhorn goes for Horn Drill, we do knock it out, we don't level up, Ice Beam knocks out Execute, Gyarados is one shot by Thunderbolt, but the actual scary Pokemon after we level up here, Alakazam, there is Psychic and it does over half. We don't get the freeze, but due to Reflect, we almost do knock it out. All right, now I could do this without rare candies and it would be slightly more efficient for my experience points, but I know if I just use them all now, we're gonna win. So let's just do that and get it over with. That's my thought process. Anywho, I'm gonna go for agility, wing attack, quick attack, one shot. Agility, agility, now we'll definitely outspeed and we should one shot everything because of the badge boost in our special. Execute's knocked out, Gyarados is knocked out, Alakazam, Ice Beam, oh it's frozen, okay. And it was a three shot. Oh, we might not have won otherwise. Oh, that's gonna be so bad for the champion. Oh well. That is a problem for future Josh. By the way, I keep talking about badge boosts. They're in like the playlist description, but essentially when you beat a gym leader, you get 12.5% boost in each of the four major stats. And when you use a stat modifying move or it's used against you, you get an extra 12.5%. It was a mistake. And we sometimes use those to win. Porygon might be one of those runs because we do get agility. So that's pretty cool. Speaking of cool, Laura Lee is the Ice type Elite Four member. Ah, ah, see what I did there? Totally not intentional, but it works. And let's see how our first battle versus Laura Lee goes. She leads with Dugong, and I'm gonna go for Thunderbolt. Growl is fine, we knock it out. Now, Cloyster is pretty bad special, so we knock it out in one hit. Slowbro, we could just go for agility, but we don't. Now, Jinx has very high special. It actually outspeeds and can freeze or paralyze. Thankfully, it doesn't do either. And we're at 80 HP. Body Slam doesn't knock us out, but Hydro Pump does. So, seems like Laura Lee is going to be a little trickier than just using attacks, but not that much trickier. This time versus Dugong, I go for Agility. It goes for Rest. And I'm going to go for Thunderbolt. It goes for Rest. And that means I can set up two more agilities. I was kind of hoping it would do that. Thunderbolt doesn't quite knock it out, but comes pretty close, and we'll just go for Psychic. Conserve power points. Thunderbolt will still knock out Cloyster. Thunderbolt doesn't quite knock out Slowbro, but it comes really close. We will now outspeed and two-shot Jinx. I go for Thunderbolt, and Double Slap misses. Actually, it's a three-shot, but Super Potion is perfect. And then we get a critical hit. Body Slam gets a critical hit, but that exchange comes out in my favor. And we beat Laura Lee. Not easy, actually. But Bruno, thankfully, will be super easy. We have ice moves. We have psychic moves. This should be a total joke. I'm going to go for agility just in case Hitmonlee outspeeds. And you know what? Might as well go for three. Nothing to worry about with Onyx. We knock out Onyx. Hitmonchan, psychic, one shot. Hitmonlee, psychic, one shot. Onyx, psychic, one shot. And Machamp, psychic, one shot. Pretty easy. Perfect level up just before Agatha. Now, Agatha likes to use Hypnosis. She likes to use Dream Eater. We have Elixirs. The goal will be to outspeed and one shot with Psychic, but that's probably not going to happen. So I'm going to go for Agility. It goes for Hypnosis, but I wake up immediately. Then it goes for Nightshade. Agility, I will outspeed. Psychic is going to be a two shot. And unfortunately, with 56 HP, one more Nightshade will knock me out from this Gengar. Golbat, I'm going to go for Ice Beam. Doesn't quite knock it out, but we get the freeze. And because of that, I can set up two more agilities. And that means Psychic will one-shot Haunter. That means Thunderbolt will one-shot Golbat. And that means Psychic will one-shot Arbok. 
But if we get Nightshade, we lose. Dream Eater. Let's go. That's awesome. Lance shouldn't be too, too bad. I mean, we have Ice Beam. I'm going to use a Rare Candy right here just to be sure. And at level 60, can we beat Lance? This could be a first try victory with Porygon. Wow. I can't believe it's doing so well. Hyper Beam. I go for Ice Beam accidentally. I meant to go for Agility. But thankfully, Hyper Beam requires a recharge. So while I have very little HP left, I do have enough probably to win. Ice Beam one-shots both Dragonair. And do we outspeed Aerodactyl? And do we one-shot? Yes and yes. And now, all we have left is the champion. We are at level 61. We can set up Agilities versus Pidgeot. And we can just try our best to freeze or two-shot Alakazam. There's nothing really I can do. Let's try it. Hopefully it works out and we get that first try victory. So Whirlwind, Agility, perfect. A second Agility, Mirror Move, Agility is fine. And then Wing Attack, ah, crit sucks. Okay, Ice Beam, now Alakazam, Ice Beam, ah, oh, that's not good. And we get a crit and we're confused. Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> that was freaking brutal. Um, alrighty. So, yeah, thoughts? Laura Lee is harder than I thought. That's not a big deal because at least with Laura Lee, she's the first trainer. So if we lose, it's not a big time loss. Agatha is going to be a little annoying. But realistically, we pretty much have this until the champion, right? Wrong. Because this exact same attempt, attempt number two, here's how Agatha goes. We get Agility, we get Psychic, Dream Eater. Starts really nice. Golbat, we go for Ice Beam, knocks it out. Haunter, we go for Psychic, it doesn't. And then we get Nightshade, then we get Dream Eater, then we get Nightshade. And Agatha, like always, is going to be very, very annoying. So that's something to deal with. And unfortunately, you might wonder, hey, J-Rose, doesn't Nightshade not affect a normal Pokemon? In Gen 1 and Gen 1 only, any move that doesn't have a damage value, so like Bide, Nightshade, Sonic Boom, affect all Pokemon. They ignore all type effectivenesses, period. My theory is that was the easiest way to avoid resistances and that kind of stuff, but it had the unintended or maybe intended side effect of ignoring immunities as well. Anywho, after a loss to Laura Lee, we make it past Agatha on attempt number four, and that happens. So yeah, that is also a thing that can happen to us. Great. So this is actually attempt number six. Laura Lee has proved to be pretty annoying, and I just skipped them because, well, a lot of it is just freezing, so that's really obnoxious. Anywho, this battle starts off pretty poorly with hitting myself in confusion twice, but we do knock out Gengar number one with lots of HP. Unfortunately, we don't knock out Golbat. Haunter, I go for Ice Beam, try for the freeze. It's gonna be a two-hit anyway. And Arbok now gets knocked out, so that's fine. No matter what this does, we will knock it out in two hits, and that means we'll make it to Lance. But are we gonna get critted by Hyper Beam? Probably not, but who the heck knows? We also have three elixirs, which tends to be perfect. Gen 1 is pretty nice. There's a lot of things about this run that work out really perfectly to make it a lot of fun for me to make. Anyway, Hydro Bump misses. Agility doesn't miss because it can't. And all right, so we're going to make it to the champion for the second time. We are 0 for 1. And unsurprisingly, it is 0. What? <laughs> okay. Um... All right, I guess I didn't think that could happen, so maybe we should use a second agility. Anyway, now we've made it back to the champion, and let's hope Alakazam doesn't ruin my day. All right, so same thing as last time. We go for agility, mirror move fails, agility, sky attack. Uh-oh, I have to just attack. I don't want to get hit by that. So we only use two, psychic hits, and it crits, and my special drop. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, that was just brutal luck all around. So now's the time where I have to start thinking, okay, what do we do? Because realistically, I have two options. I could try a few more times and luck will work differently. 
You see, in Gen 1, because they attack randomly, you can win at a far earlier level than if this was Gen 3. In Gen 3, Loralee, Agatha, and especially Lance and the Champion would always do the optimal move, and we'd probably need to be like level 70 or higher. There's a reason I didn't do this in Fire Red and Leaf Green. It would take a lot longer. Red and Blue, they're classics, and they've got great stuff, and also less great stuff, but I love them. Anyway, the thought process is that I know I can do this without a freeze. We can get Recover, Reflect, and it is a 10% chance every time I use Ice Beam. So if we get Alakazam using Recover a bunch, we have chance for freeze. The bigger issue is that I don't know what exactly is going to occur after I defeat the Alakazam. In theory, as we battle Agatha, I guess I'll kind of take a break and just talk about this battle because this is pretty scary. So... I'm going to go for Agility Dream Eater is perfect, alright? And Confuse Ray less perfect. Okay, we knock it out, I can deal with Golbat. So we actually snap out of Confusion, and we get the Freeze. Perfect. That doesn't guarantee victory, but it almost all but does. The- oh god. Well, that misclick could hurt us. I was going to say the one thing that could damage us is Confusion from Gengar, but looks like I did a good job with the misclick, but thankfully, I think that was like a 6% chance we don't hit ourselves in Confusion a single time in 4 turns. I don't know if I counted that properly, but now all I have to worry about is a single Hyper Beam and potentially a bad range and a crit from Arida. Actually, the crit didn't matter, but it used Takedown and not Hyper Beam. Anyway, Leer is perfect. We're fine. That, that's actually an extra badge boost. So we're going to one-shot Aerodactyl 100% now, which is really good. So thank you, Gyarados. That was very kind of you. We've made it to the champion. I think if I don't beat it here, 0 for 3, it might be the time to level up. But let me see one more time. Again, I don't know what's going to happen after Alakazam. I just kind of have to get past it once. And if it's that much more difficult after we get past Alakazam, I know it's time to try something different. Okay, mirror move, agility, agility, mirror move, agility, sky attack, and Thunderbolt knocks it out. One down. Alakazam, I go for Ice Beam. There's the freeze. All right, we're getting past Alakazam. Three a KO, perfect. Right on, I go for Ice Beam. Knocked out. Executor, I go for Ice Beam. Stomp, that's fine. Great, we have tons of HP for Gyarados. And actually, I think we got this. We level up, but we still have speed. It's not gonna one shot. Fire Spin, thankfully no crit, but it's not gonna do that much damage. GG. Okay, so um, that was an interesting run. I thought it would be interesting Porygon, such a weird Pokemon. This was definitely better than pre-evolved Pokemon. Level 62 is actually pretty low. <laughs> 422. Uh, some people might like, almost like that time. Uh, where do I put this on the tier list? You know what? Because Ghastly is pre-evolved, it should always win any tiebreaker, so I'll put it just above Hitmonlee. That guarantees that Porygon of all Pokemon will be at least in the top 50% because we're about halfway done, which is crazy. I'm going to try to get more pre-evolved Pokemon done, and yes, I will try to get a video on each and every of the 150 Pokemon. I might combine some by the end, but that is the goal, to finish every single Pokemon and say, hey, I played the game with every single Pokemon once. That really wasn't the intent when I started this, but at this point, I'm really excited to see it through. At the same time, I also have some non-Gen 1 videos coming that are going to be pretty cool. So if you enjoy this, you enjoy them, please let me know, leave a like, subscribe, be back, because I'm going to be back very soon. Take care.